So I am here with an update about Richard Allen in the Delphi case, and it is pretty unexpected. Before we get into it though, I do wanna let you guys know if you don't already know that this video is for educational purposes only, please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. Hope everybody's having a wonderful week. Tomorrow is Friday. I am filming this for y'all on Thursday and it is not morning. So I'm saying good morning, good morning, good morning. It is afternoon here. So it's probably afternoon everywhere that you guys are watching this. If you're in the US, if you're in another part of the world, maybe it's morning. So good afternoon or good morning. So we have an update and it is a very interesting one. I'm not gonna go into the whole spiel about this case because if I did, it would take me 30 minutes just to get to what we're gonna talk about today. So what I wanna say is that if you are not all caught up on everything that is going on with the Delphi situation and the Delphi case and Libby and Abby and Richard Allen, his old attorneys, I wanted to say his attorneys, but his as of now, ex-defense attorneys, Rosie and Baldwin and Judge Goal and all of the mess that's been going on and it has been some mess. Please go and watch my playlist. You're going to want to find out. And if you're, you're just dabbling your toe and you're like, I keep seeing this everywhere. What is going on? Get, get to my playlist and you will be caught up real quick. And it has been a lot. So for those of y'all that have been following, then you know that a few months back, Richard Allen's attorneys, Rosie and Baldwin, requested for Judge Goal to move Richard Allen facilities, saying that he was being mistreated in there. That's when the phone calls came out. And for those of y'all that remember, it was released, it went wild in the media that Richard Allen confessed to his wife and to his mother five times over the phone, hey, I'm the one that did this. Hey, I actually did this. Now, when he did, his mom and his wife were very confused from what we could see as of now and everything hasn't come out yet. When he confessed it, it wasn't like a heartfelt, like I'm like, I did this. I'm sorry. It was a very awkward in the conversation, the way he just threw it out. And even to the point that his wife ended up hanging up on him. Well, when the attorneys looked into it, allegedly it was because the correctional officers there we're forcing him to by saying, if you do not do this and standing over him while he was using the phone, that they were going to come after his family, his wife, his mother, and his family. Allegedly, how Richard Allen's attorneys, Rosie and Baldwin, found this out is because when they would go to meet with Richard Allen to talk to him about the case, immediately, Richard Allen would say to them, hey, is my wife okay? Is my wife alive? Is everybody alive? Is everybody okay? And they were like, yes, why do you keep asking this? And this is when they found out that what was going on in the prison was they weren't feeding him. They, you know, they've kept him in isolation, allegedly for his protection, which, you know, that it could be for his protection, especially since how high profile this case is. But they've kept him in isolation in a very small cell, sleeping on a mat on the floor, allegedly not feeding him, messing with him, and all of this stuff. Now, when we originally heard this and it sounded like he was confessing, it was just kind of like, well, you know, he needs to go to trial, prove that he's innocent. I mean, but now it's looking like there is a possibility that he there could be more to this, that he didn't just confess because he did it, but that this could be a setup. When his attorneys, Rosie and Baldwin, put in the request with all of these like bullet points of things that was happening, they were not letting him shower in there, they weren't letting him like have like the right food, uh, clean clothes. Some of the things kind of makes me giggle because it's kind of like, well, that kind of happens with everybody in prison. But, you know, but all of these things, um, the judge said no. And I'm putting this in my own words. So 
Please go do your own research, form your own opinions. Everything in this video is alleged. I'm filtering it through my own words and my own opinions, and I'm not a professional, okay? Judge Gold responded to that and was basically like, no. As a matter of fact, Judge Gold said that Richard Allen was being treated more favorably than the other inmates. Now, Judge Gold. For serious, I mean, if she would have said that he's being treated like every other inmate, then it would be like, okay. But for her to say that he was being treated more favorably, I mean, just look at the before and after. Something's going on in there. I mean, the man was drooling on himself. Okay, so something's going on. And the other inmates were writing letters saying, hey, he is being treated differently. Not just like he's being treated bad, we're all being treated bad, but like, they're doing something to that guy over there that they've got isolated in a room who the prison guards were saying that Richard Allen was refusing to sleep, saying he was refusing to eat, refusing to shower, refusing to sleep, which if they said he was refusing to shower and refusing to eat, okay, but refusing to sleep, how is that even possible? At some point, you're going to pass out, okay? But anyways... So all of this stuff was going on. The judge denied him to be moved to another place for his safety and his attorneys were fighting for him to be moved. Well, as of last night from me filming this video right now, he was moved in the middle of the night to another prison. I've seen a lot of people online saying, wait a minute, they moved him in the middle of the night. Well, that that's how they do it anywhere I've ever heard of and even in my own experience, they come and get you in the middle of the night and they move you. So to me, that's not alarming. They moved him hours away from where he's at to another prison. Now this other prison, when I looked it up, it's kind of got a bad reputation too. And there's some funny people in that prison, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But they moved him hours away. I see a lot of people online saying that they think that the they did this on purpose in order to make it harder for him to get a defense. Maybe they did, but in my opinion, if I was in charge of moving Richard Allen, I would move him as far away from that town, from anybody that could be labeled as part of this cult that they're claiming has done all of this stuff. They're going to want to get Richard Allen as far away as possible so he can get treated like every other inmate. The issue, though, is that they put him in a prison and he's not been found guilty versus being in a county jail. But then I go back and forth with that because a county jail is actually worse. It's more miserable than a prison. They both have their worse qualities and their little bit of better than each other qualities. But yeah. But if they've got him in isolation for his protection, none of it's good. I mean, if he is sitting in, in solitary confinement every day, I hope he's the one that did it. I hope he's guilty because if he's innocent at the end of this and he gets found innocent, they're going to sue the heck out of all of these people. And they probably should. Now, something that is very interesting, the prison that they moved Richard Allen to holds multiple different people who has been spoken about around surrounding this case who have had like some sort of ties or rumors to deal with this case. Now, one of the people's names is James Chadwell. Now, James Chadwell, who is a habitual offender for assaulting, R-wording, and all that other stuff, as a matter of fact, James Chadwell was investigated in the Delphi situation and he's been sentenced to 90 years in prison and he's being held at that prison. Now, look at his picture. Now, look at one of the sketches. I mean, there's some resemblance there too, which is weird. Like all of these things, like when you really start looking at this case, it is like, what in the heck is going on? Because there's a resemblance and he just got sentenced in 2021 which was four years after Libby and Abby were found in the ways that they were found, he was sentenced for doing almost the same exact thing. Although again, we haven't seen the crime scene photos. According to the defense, their bodies were set up like it was a ritual, a, a cult-like ritual, okay? But it's weird. They just put him in that prison with him. Now, whether there's a reason for that, I don't know. I'm hoping that they moved him there because they wanted to get him as far away 
from any of these guards that are wearing these patches or anything in order to get him a fair trial. Speaking of a fair trial, I hope that what is going to follow this moving of, of Richard Allen is going to be the moving of the, the courts, right? Moving of like the prosecution and a new judge, which by the way, Judge Gold seems to be fighting to stay on this case for some reason, which again is weird to me. If I was in her position, I feel like I'd be like, oh, okay, fine. Let somebody else handle it. You know, we want it to be fair. And if they're feeling uncomfortable with me, then we need to, to move judges. But looks like she's doing everything she can, including responding to the writ and the paperwork and all of that to stay on the case for some reason. Almost makes you feel like she might have some sort of like motivation to want to be the judge. Anyways, for those of y'all that think Richard Allen is the is guilty he's the guy and again i still stand firm on he could be i'm not convinced he's not the guy i'm not convinced that he didn't do it alone i'm not convinced that he didn't do it with another person okay i'm not convinced that he wasn't involved in these rituals too and he happened to be there and he was just one of them that got caught okay and i'm also not convinced that he's the guy and i'm definitely not convinced that there's not some funny business going on with all of this but if he is the guy if he did this the way that they're handling it, in my opinion, in Delphi, with Judge Gole and the prosecution and all this mess, he could get a mistrial. He could be let off. He could be the guy and walk free. It has to be fair. He has to have a fair trial. And what's going on right now ain't fair. It's messed up. It's wonky. It's confusing. It's shady. Something's going on in Delphi. A couple other things I just wanted to throw in here. In the video that I did right before Thanksgiving where we went over the transcripts from the little meeting that they had in the judges' chambers before Judge Gold came out on camera and said that they had an unexpected turn of events. Now, I had a lot of y'all saying that the judge was just trying to, you know, do the right thing for them and give them a chance to basically bow out gracefully. I would believe that we're going to, I'm going to agree to disagree. I would believe that if she didn't allow the cameras in the courtroom. So you guys got to remember that Judge Gold refused to allow cameras in the courtroom, even though the defense requested it. They want the public to see what's going on. The judge said no, no cameras. But on that day, she had cameras ready. So she goes in this meeting with them and lets them know that cameras is going to be out there and that the prosecution had been doing this investigation about the leaks of the the crime scene photos, and they had witnesses and everything. So they were getting ready to go out there in the courtroom with the prosecution against the defense team, the actual attorneys, and they had witnesses. Who knows who the witnesses are? Who knows what they were going to say? Who knows what connections they have? They have no idea of, not, of anything. And the judge was going to allow all that to happen, allegedly, in my opinion, and from the way that I'm interpreting the paperwork, and all be on camera for the first and only time and then call the two attorneys incompetent and that they were messing up the case basically and all of this. Like, don't y'all think that's weird? It, it was a setup, in my opinion. And it was just as plain as day. So do I think she did the right thing? I think she did what she was wanting to do. Then for the conversation to be had about the photos being leaked, no, I agree the photos should not have been leaked, especially more than anything because we're talking about two middle schoolers, two minors. However, like I said in the other video, and if you guys are going to be here the beginning of next week for the video that I'm going to post, you, you guys are going to see an example in this case. We see cases all the time where the prosecution leaks stuff. In the video that I'm going to be doing, the case that I'm going to be doing Monday, Monday or Tuesday, it's going to come out, the prosecution leaked literally a crime scene photo. And I mean, it makes sense. When you see the photo, you're like, oh my gosh. But they're not removing them from the case or any of these situations. But in this situation, Judge Gull removed Rosie and Baldwin even after they said that they would defend him for free because somebody that was connected to one of them re released these photos. And he had two attorneys, two separate firms, and only this one's firm was connected, but Rosie's wasn't. And she got, come on, you guys. I mean, I'm all for a good, you know, 
Wow, that's an interesting coinky dink. But all of these things being a coincidence or a coinky, I, I just can't, y'all. It can't be that many. There's something, something funny's going on. So I really hope that they do a whole new trial system. And with that being said, too, a lot of the times these people that get arrested, Sarah Boone, Aiden Fucci, um, Casey Anthony, Brian Koberger, their attorneys request for them to be moved and their case to be tried in another county because they say they, they're not going to get a fair trial because the people that are in the public, that'll be called, you know, a jury of your peers are too emotionally invested and everybody knows about the case. And most of the time, pretty much dang near all the time, I'm like, that's ridiculous. People can be fair, even with the Brian Koberger situation, especially too with that. One of the family members of the victims in Brian Koberger's situation came out in an interview recently and said that not only is he being treated just fine while he's in jail, but he's also basically being treated better because he is in there allegedly helping other inmates with their legal paperwork. So you've got Brian Koberger sitting in the jail being buddy-buddy with all these other inmates and helping them so he's probably getting all kind of soups and foods and being taken care of because he's got this criminology background and he can help the other inmates so he's doing just fine in there then you got Richard Allen shriveled up like he's looking I don't know it seems weird so all of that to say things just keep happening and they're just a little bit more bizarre right like now he's being moved to this new prison that happens to have somebody that looks like the sketch who went to prison, got sentenced to prison for 90 years for doing basically the same thing. It's, it's just weird, you guys. But hopefully they're going to end up moving the whole entire trial to a new judge in a new area. Give Richard Allen the attorneys that he wants. Allow cameras in the courtroom so we can all see if Richard Allen's attorneys are that crazy and they're just making all this up we're gonna see it because there will be cameras right the public will see the jury will decide and then it'll be done but if they keep messing with this situation like they are in Delphi even if Richard Allen is the person his case is gonna get thrown out and he'll walk free and so then the girls and their families won't get justice and again the girls families have been so quiet this has got to be a lot I can't imagine, too, what do they know, too, about living in that town? It's probably so much. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Other than that, I love y'all. I will see y'all in tomorrow's video on Friday. And, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Love you guys. Bye.